Good morning and welcome everyone to St. Anne's worship service this fifth Sunday of Lent. These are very strange times and very trying times and I'm glad that you are watching us online at this moment. It's so good to get together and still be able to worship our Lord as a congregation. Our opening hymn today, if you have a hymnal at home, is number 455. I hope that you'll get it out and be prepared to sing with Sue now. to service and we begin on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. of sinners. Grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the swift and varied changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord came upon me and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O dry bones, 
Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied, and I had been com as I had been commanded, and I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived, and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, Our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves, and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live. And I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. If you have the Book of Common Prayer at home, turn to page 784 for Psalm 130. Out of the depths have I called to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to note what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? For there is forgiveness with you, therefore you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchmen for the morning, more than watchmen for the morning. O Israel, Wait, wait for, for the Lord. Lord. For with, with the Lord there is mercy. With, with him there is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the Spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, Though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. The spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. He who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. If you would all please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? And Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of this world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was merely referring to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. While Mary stayed at home, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. And Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they will die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? And she said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her, because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who had opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Didn't I not tell you that if you believed, you would be
would see the glory of God. So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Open our ears, O Lord, to hear your word and know your voice. Speak to our hearts and strengthen our wills that we may serve you today, now, and always. Amen. Please be seated. You know, we're flying through Jesus' earthly ministry leading up to Palm Sunday and his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. And today we hear the story of Jesus' very last miracle before his crucifixion. This story is told only in the Gospel of John, and what a doozy it is. Jesus has been healing people from hemorrhages, from blindness, from leprosy, but all those seem like such small potatoes when it comes to what he does for his good friend Lazarus. For the final sign of his earthly ministry, Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. Now this town that Lazarus lived in, Bethany, is about two miles from Jerusalem, close enough for information to pass quickly between the two places. Jesus visited there often and had some close friends there, Lazarus and his sister Martha and Mary. They were not only his disciples, but his personal friends. It may seem odd to hear that Jesus, who is God incarnate, would have personal friends as well as disciples, but the Gospel of John is going to great lengths here to illustrate that Jesus has truly entered our human life, and that means having friends. I don't know about you, but it humanizes Jesus for me to know that he had some people who are really close to him. And it comforts me to realize that with all the demands of his very public ministry, he had a few people that he could enjoy dinner with and maybe relax just a bit. And for the first time, we have the mention of the disciple Thomas. You might remember him best by his nickname, Doubting. Thomas. Thomas is only mentioned in the other Gospels when all the disciples are listed, but he really gets a lot of airtime in the Gospel of John. Based on our reading today, instead of calling him Doubting Thomas, maybe we should call him Courageous Thomas instead. Jesus is telling his disciples that he must go back to, to Judea, a dangerous place for him. They are fearful for his safety and know without a doubt that there will be attempts on his life. He's going to see about his friend Lazarus no matter what, though. And Thomas, having spoken his opposition to Jesus' plan, gives in to Jesus' desires and boldly states to the other disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. What a friend and follower Thomas was. A statement like that gives you a whole other viewpoint on Thomas and his conviction as a follower of Jesus. He may have some misgivings, but he's all in on his desire 
to support Jesus and his ministry. But let's get back to Jesus' friend Lazarus for a moment. He's gravely ill, and one of his sisters sends word to the village that Jesus is in. Come quick, we need you. The one you love so much is very ill, she says. I don't know about you, but if I receive a message like that about someone I care deeply for, I'm going to drop everything and go to them as fast as I possibly can. But not Jesus. He doesn't seem to sweat this at all. He's in no hurry. Indeed, he waits for days to go see his sick friend Lazarus. We all know that he didn't have to travel to see Lazarus to heal him. Jesus had healed others just because someone had asked him to, and proximity was never the issue. But he obviously had some other plans. Now, have you ever been in a situation where folks around you were worried about something? Something that you had insider information on? The kind of information that you couldn't share yet publicly? That you knew would make the situation work out just fine and that there was no need to worry? Well, that's a bit what this situation is like. Jesus does delay in arriving, and when he does, Lazarus has died and has actually been in the tomb for four whole days. Without modern embalming techniques, you had to bury people quickly in tombs hollowed out of limestone rock, outcroppings, and then you'd cover that opening with a large stone once you had laid the body inside. Jesus arrives and he's deeply moved emotionally by the grief of Lazarus' sisters and his friends. Expressions of deep human emotion like this reveal the humanity of Christ. Just like other human beings, Jesus weeps at the grave of a loved one. I think in this delay to come see about Lazarus, is where the lesson is for us all. God's timing, especially his delays, may make us think he is not answering or is not answering in the way that we want. We have the opportunity here to remember that Jesus will meet all of our needs according to his perfect schedule and purpose, not ours. And Jesus did not delay in healing Lazarus out of some showmanship to impress people. This was an essential display of his healing ministry and of the truth of a major belief in the Christian faith. That he not only can be raised from the dead, but he also has the power to raise others like you and me. The Gospel of John stresses that we have a God who cares, who cares for each and every one of us. He shows it in his weeping with the other mourners, and he shows it in his willingness to give us his life for us all. So Jesus raises Lazarus in a spectacular way that draws Lots and lots of attention. These are pretty exciting times for Jesus and his disciples. For a moment, there are more believers than ever. A momentum is building that will sweep Jesus through the gates of Jerusalem in the triumphant parade of Palm Sunday. But it also stirs his opponents to a new level commitment to get rid of him. But before we look ahead, I do want us to leave with this message today. God cares and cares deeply for each 
and every one of us. Share your concerns and desires with God, just like Lazarus' sisters Mary and Martha did, and have the faith that they came to find, that God, in his time and in his way, will answer all our prayers. Amen. Amen. Now, if you have a Book of Common Prayer, please turn to page 358 and join me in the reaffirmation of our faith by reciting the Nicene Creed. believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people, Form 3, is found on page 387 of your Book of Common Prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacrament. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. I would like to offer this prayer for the pandemic that we are experiencing at this time. May we who are merely inconvenienced Remember those whose lives are at stake. May we who have no risk factors remember those most vulnerable. May we who have the luxury of working from home remember those who must choose between preserving their health or making their rent. May we who have the flexibility to care for our children when their schools close remember those who have no options. May we who have to cancel our trips remember those that have no safe place to go. May we 
who are losing our margin money in the tumult of the economic market. Remember those who have no margin at all. May we who settle in for a quarantine at home remember those who have no home. As fear grips our country, let us choose love. During this time, when we cannot physically wrap our arms around each other, let us yet find ways to be the loving embrace of God to our neighbors. Amen. Amen. Now let us humbly confess our sin against God and our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So this is it. Peace, guys. Peace, Janet. Rick, Sue, peace. And especially peace to all of you at home that I miss so much, and I'm so glad we can be together in this way, and I pray for the day to come soon that we can all be together in this beautiful church once again. Just a couple of uh, quick announcements. Um, uh, please reach out to me. Uh, I am here. I'm lonely, like you probably are too. Uh, I, uh, you can call me on the cell phone. You can email me, text me. Um, I, I, I want to hear what's going on in, in your lives. Gracie and I are well um, and doing our lonely, very lonely walks these days around here. Um, and my family as well. Uh, as well. So, um, and I'm so happy to have you guys up here with me today. It's a delight to see you and uh, to help uh, worship with these folks today. Um, there'll be some more announcements coming out about services and what we're going to do down the future. I hope this email format is working for you. Um, if you're having trouble or you're not getting them, uh, please let me know uh, and we'll make sure that we get you on the list. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself as an offering and sacrifice to God.
have taken proper precautions for communion today, and the four of us will be taking communion symbolically for all of you at home. Our service continues if you do have your prayer book on page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them, them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that fervent in prayer and in works of mercy and renewed by your word and sacrament, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. sacrifice to the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of, of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ has risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And we celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Our service continues with the post-communion prayer, which is found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace. Grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind, for everyone is fighting an unseen battle. May God's peace go with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. 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 Janet, what is the number of our closing hymn? 680. 680. If you have a hymnal, please join in singing number 680.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God.